Well, hi there, it's Tiffany from Daisy Farm Crafts. And today I am just putting the finishing touches on a little blessing blanket I made for my little brand new granddaughter, Kate. And um, I just thought I would hop on here and show you the stitches that I used. We'll get to that border in a minute. Look at this. I just wanted something really a little, you know, more dainty for her. Just put just a little touch of scallop on it. Um, so, and this one I made really quite small, actually. I just made this to be more like a little car seat cover for her. But the tradition in our family, well, you know what? Let me get to the pattern first, and then maybe why we talk. I'll tell you the tradition of our family of why... I make a white blanket for all the little gram for my grandbaby. Okay, so the yarn I'm using is Bernat Softy Cotton. I love this yarn. It is comes in this label or there's a baby label too. So, but it's essentially the same yarn. You can get it in white in either label. So if you happen to be at the store, look at it for both in both sections if you can't find it in one section. They might have it in a different section or find it on yarnspirations.com. It's a 40% cotton, no, sorry, 40 acrylic, 60% cotton. And I just, I, I really enjoy working with it. And especially for my little babies, I'm using a G four millimeter hook for this blanket. So to get this blanket started, all you will need to do is to chain an odd number, any odd number, to the width that you would like your blanket. So let's just put maybe 15 chains on for right now for to, so I can show you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, we'll just make a little sample here. So the first row, begin in the second chain from the hook, it's just all single crochet. So if you're a brand new beginner, I'm inserting my hook underneath the top loop there trying to keep my tension really nice and even. Okay, you might want to double check because what really is important, even though we started with an odd number, that accounted for the, the chain one and turn, we really want to have 14 stitches here. We want to have an even number of single crochet stitches. So that extra, while you start with an odd, that accounts for the extra chain one and turn. So now after this row, we are chaining two and turning. This is going to be the double crochet cross row. So the double, the chain two counts as the first stitch. So if you can line it up and you see this first, you know, working under there, that is already accounted for. So that's our first double crochet. We're going to skip the next one and work into the third one. So we're working third stitch from on the row. If you need to count the chains down from your hook, one, two, three, four, five, yarn over, Insert your hook, and I am inserting my hook underneath both Vs, and let's work that double crochet. Now we skipped one. We're going to yarn over, insert our hook into the one that we skipped, grab that yarn, pull up a loop, 
pull through two, pull through two. Okay, so essentially that's what we're doing. We're just kind of crisscrossing our double crochets. So same, so now skip the next stitch, work your double crochet into the next. And one thing I found I really liked to do is to really make sure that I, I kind of kept this pinched together. Keep that, those, that bar um, tighter together. I'll show you like what could happen. Okay, then go back and, you know, make sure you get that mi the mix, the mist stitch right there. Okay, so sometimes if I didn't pinch it together, it's like this, this would get too separated out. You see how that you're, you can lose your tension and then that becomes really long in there. What I like to do is come over here and kind of make sure I give it a pinch or hold it really tight together so the stitch, you know, we're leaning it over. And then go back and hit that missed stitch. This has turned into just the prettiest little, little stitch. I'm sure it's, it's an old fashioned one and I've, I've seen people in my comments on Facebook say, call it crossed stitch or X stitch. I mean, I really don't know the official name other than I'm just, you know, I'm skipping a stitch, working a double crochet, going back and working double crochet into the missed stitch. Now, hopefully if we've done our counting, we should have one stitch left at the end. And that's where we'll just work a solitary single double crochet, just one. And that way the double crochet over here matches our chain two over here. So the sides of our blanket will stay straight. Now chain one and turn. Let's make sure we work one single crochet into the top of each stitch across the row. And one thing you're going to have to remember is on this row, the final stitch is worked into the turning chain. It's not my favorite thing to do, but you've got to do it. Because if you remember those turning chains, they are representative of the first stitch of the row. So we need to work into them as the last stitch of the row. So here we go. You can always tell it's kind of leaning over. And if you prefer to chain three and, and turn or you're using different yarn and the chain two is just a little bit too tight, go ahead. You could always do chain three and two, turn as well. I just found with this cotton, two was plenty for me to get up to the next row. But did you see how I just worked underneath a couple of those loops? of that chain. Chain two, turn your work, and we're off and running. I found that if I did make any mistake, it was like that I would get off, it mostly started that I didn't work in this third stitch from the chain, you know, just accidentally, and then the crosses didn't line up. So, if there was, if you see that your crosses aren't lining up, that might be it. Make sure you're starting in the third. But also, if your crosses aren't lining up, you might have missed working into that chain when you did the single crochet roll. So, okay, so that is basically the body of the blanket. And now I'll show you what I did for the border. Okay, so here's my little sample. Say this is representative of the full blanket. Make sure you end with a row of single crochet. And let me show you what I did for the border. So the first thing I did was chain one and turn. Whoops, and I worked two rounds of single crochet. 
So generally that is one single crochet into each stitch. It's easy to do the ones across the top. It gets a little bit tricky when you do the ones on the side, but the ones on the side of the rows, I did two single crochets on the double crochet ends and one for the single crochet row. So I'll show you when we get there. Okay, so here's the first stitch. Well, let's see, yeah. We've chained and turned. So this is my corner. And for the corners, I did single crochet, chain two, then single crochet. And this single crochet I'm working counts for the end of this first row right here. That's our single crochet row. So we've already got that one in. So now here we are at the end of the double crochet row. I'm going to work two single crochets around that post. One single crochet in, around the post of that single crochet row, and then two here. That seemed to keep it the most even. So when we get to the other side, of course, we'll be working around those turning chains. So this is the double crochet side. Okay, so I'm gonna insert my hook here. This is gonna be the corner. Chain two. And I'm gonna single crochet right there. Now I'm going to work on the underside of that chain kind of where they cross, that's where I'm going to insert my hook. All right, so you can tell this is our last stitch of the round. That was kind of our starting tail right there. And you could have woven it in ahead of time too. Or you, choose to do <laughs> what you want. If you want to go ahead and weave that end in. Since this is the sample, I'm not really going to worry about it. But make sure you just do your single crochet, chain two, single crochet. And here we are. We, I'm going to start, you know, cause I kind of have that single crochet counting as that first row. Let's just begin with our two single crochets working right around those turning chains this time. Okay, so this is our start here and I am going to work one single crochet I will chain two and I'm going to join with a slip stitch to that very first single crochet that we made of the round. Then I will chain one and turn and right away into this chain two space is where I'm going to work my corner. And I'm going to do the single crochet, chain two, single crochet. So we've already got our corner already made. Now is it will be easy. You can work. When you get to the corner, make sure you're working in the single crochet right up to the chain two. Then work single crochet, chain two single crochet around those chain twos, and then make sure you, you grab that first single crochet. Sometimes that can get hidden. So be aware of that. And on the next round is when we will work the shells. Okay, here we are back to the starting corner. 
So make sure we work our last stitch here of the round and then join with a slip stitch to that single crochet. And chain one and turn. So now we get to work the shells. So I'm gonna just start in this first stitch with a single crochet. And I like my shells to be really close together, so I only skip one stitch. And then I work five double crochets. All into that same stitch. Here's the shell. Then I skip one, and I work single crochet. So for me, that's just because I just kind of like them really tight and it makes them arc a little bit. I've seen patterns where you can skip two. You are more than welcome to as well. But I like personally just skipping one. So that's the shells around the border. We're going to continue that. Let me, and then you, of course, you know, you kind of be a little bit flexible when you get to the corners if it works out that you can put the shell around the chain two space that's the ideal so you kind of at those times you know you kind of look ahead maybe maybe you will skip two chains here like i'm gonna go ahead and skip two here so that i can do my single crochet right here because i'd just much rather have the shell be in the corner so keep that in mind so here's one. Oh, and I was thinking, if, I hope this isn't, I mean, I should have told you what a double crochet is. If you're a beginner, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up that loop. I'm pulling through two and then pulling through two. So look how cute this looks if you can get it to match up around the corner. And then if it's too much, it would pull too much to skip one, just go into the next one. Start right there. Anything to make it look good. <laughs> That's what I love about crochet. This is, and, and you're the artist. Sometimes for a lot of times in my crochet, I always felt like, oh, I had to follow the pattern exactly. And in some cases you do, like when you're starting to do the shaping and stuff, but when it's when it's borders like this, you can use your intuition and you don't, you know, do, do what's gonna make it look really good. That's it, I was gonna show you on the main blanket, you'll just, you would just join with a slip stitch when you return to the end and that's it. That's all I'm going to be doing on this little blanket. I wanted it really, really just dainty and sweet. I actually prefer not using too many techniques and in one blanket, too many little stitch designs, but I just thought this was so, so pretty. So I've got to finish this out when I get here. Ooh, hopefully I'll be lucky to finish one more shell into this corner and I'll just slip stitch right there. So 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 pretty well um the story of why i do a little blessing blanket is my mother st i guess started this tradition with her children and um you know she made blessing blankets for us and then she made blessing blankets for her grandchildren so i always had a blanket to celebrate the birth of my children and when they had a blessing at church this was the blanket that I would bring and and hold the baby in so I don't know that's why we call it a blessing blanket and that's why I like to do them white but I do think it's a it's just such a I love welcoming babies into the world with a I, I think you know if you've been following us a lot we call our we called our book handmade hug and um, 
I think that's what crochet is sometimes when we do these baby blankets. It's a handmade hug for your baby or whoever you're gifting it to. So it's important to me. Um, but anyway, thank you so much for stopping by. There will be so many more projects coming up for baby Kate. I'm working on bonnets. I'm working on little dresses for her. I just am so excited to have a little granddaughter. So stay tuned. All right, we'll see you guys.